John Gruden continued to wage war with his own front office, or did he? If you read Twitter, if you read the reactions of many of my media cohorts, if you watch sports on TV, you might be appalled at what John Gruden had to say about Derwin James and why the Raiders chose to pass on Derwin James. Quote, we want to take Derwin James. Everybody wanted Der- Derwin James. But he said, however, pointed out the obstacle entered in the 2018 draft was that the Raiders previously used a first-round pick on Carl Joseph in 2016 and a second-round pick on safety Obi Milafoyu in 2017. Quote, he's an intimidating player. He's a physical presence. I think he's got range to play deep. He's got great coverage ability. He can run through you. He can run around you. He can run right over you. He's a dynamite young player. He'll be one of the building blocks in L.A. for a long time for the Chargers. Derwin James, by the way, three sacks already on the season, leading all defensive backs in the National Football League. And he's got at least one. Does he have two picks? I think he's had two picks on the year. Derwin James is the real deal. It should be pointed out that the Chargers feel the exact same way about Pat Mahomes that the Raiders feel that the Raiders feel about Derwin James. They really like Pat Mahomes. And of course, the Chiefs ended up trading up to 10 to get Pat Mahomes, but they really, really liked him and instead took Forrest Lamp, who got hurt and is now a backup waiting for his chance. I love Lamp. Anchorman loves Lamp, right? Ron Burgundy, I love Lamp. But Pat Mahomes appears to be a superstar at the most important position in the NFL, and the Chargers are still searching for the replacement for Phillip Rivers whenever PR decides to sit it down. But what happens when John Gruden speaks the truth and gives context to why, hey, if you like Derwin James, why don't you take Derwin James? Why'd you take an offensive lineman? Uh, Derwin James leads the Chargers defense and tackles at 26, sacks at three, passes defense at six. Why'd they take an offensive lineman if you like Derwin James? You would love Derwin James so much. This must be a shot at Reggie McKenzie. That's what it is. Must be a shot at Reggie McKenzie. And of course, when you go back to when they traded Khalil Mack, and he talked about how Khalil Mack was great a couple years ago when they made the playoffs, but the rest of the defense wasn't, that had to be a shot at Reggie McKenzie. Now, I'm not saying that Reggie McKenzie and John Gruden aren't ultimately going to part company at the end of this year. I think that's logical. Logical. Gruden has been given carte blanche, a 10-year, $100 million or somewhere in the neighborhood contract to fix the Raiders. They were fixed before, and he walked into a camp of guys that he didn't draft with front office guys that he didn't previously work with. No one rolls that way in the sport. Anyone who tells you otherwise is lying. Normally, general managers want to hire their coach. In this case, the owner hired the coach, which means the coach will hire the general manager. Just hasn't happened yet. But somehow John Gruden has become Donald Trump. Excuse me, President Trump. No, I I have not talking about there's video of him on a bus over a decade ago. No, they both have bizarre hairstyles. There is that. There is that, right? Uh, and and they both kind of have an orangish hue. Um, But that's kind of where it ends in terms of the comparison. What I mean by that is anytime the president says anything at a press conference or a pep rally or he tweets it out, it's it's taken as defamation of somebody else's character. We just run with it. When the reality of what John Gruden is saying is, hey, look, I like Derwin James. Thought he's great. You know, I lived in South Florida. Of course, I saw Florida State play. I evaluated for the NFL draft for a decade for ESPN. Of course, I like Derwin James. But we just drafted two defensive backs for the last two years. Hey, those guys are under contracts. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to simply go by your board when you have so many other needs on a team that won six games. Now, maybe he could have contextualized it a little bit better, or maybe we just have the inability to listen. 
I'm not going to sit here and defend everything the president has said or done, but I will say that everything that he says and things that he does aren't always to defame somebody else's character, aren't always a way of trolling somebody on Twitter or trolling somebody in the media. Some of that does, in fact, happen. Our massive overreaction. Man, if he did, did in fact, say as, uh, was it Mike Silver? Is that who, who wrote about it? Mike Silver wrote about it earlier this week. If he did, in fact, say, are you kidding me? Khalil Mack had another strip sack? That, that doesn't mean that he made a mistake. He knew Khalil Mack was awesome. None of this is surprising. He said, I mean, they said, hey, two first-round picks, and people laughed at the Raiders for wanting two first-round picks for a guy that you had to give the biggest contract in the history of the sport for his position to. And you know what he got? Two first-round picks. When he said it's really hard to find rush linebackers, rush defensive ends, people took it and ran with it. They didn't listen to the full context of the quote in which he said, hey, it's tough, it's tough to find because of the way college football is taught, is coached, and played in the offensive side of the ball. Guys can't get home. They get rid of it way too quickly. we got to reteach offensive linemen. We've got to reteach linebackers. And we got a couple guys we're working with, and we're still trying to find defensive line help. Everybody in the NFL, outside of the Bears and a couple other teams, is trying to find defensive line help. You're either trying to find a quarterback, you're trying to find a defensive lineman, or you're trying to fix an uh, offensive line. But the Patriots don't have great pass rushers. Patriots trade away Brandon Cooks. And now they lack speed in the offense. None of these teams that trade away these players think the players stink. They're just trying to balance out how good a guy is with how much money he makes and how they can fit it around a team concept. But for whatever reason, I, I know what the reason is. I mean, I know what the reason is. The reason that we overreact to Trump stuff is this is not the way in which a president has ever carried himself. Ever. Ever. It's not the things he says and does. It's the way he says them, the way he does them. We just haven't had that kind of de- decorum from the leader of the free world. We've had this type of honesty from coaches before. We've even had infighting between coaches and general managers before. The difference is you know how much money John Gruden makes, and that's making people go crazy. None of us have any idea truly how much Bill Belichick makes. I mean, that's really the same thing with Jim Harbaugh. Oh, Harbaugh makes the third most of any coach. I heard Clay Travis. He's so overpaid. Clay Travis is not dumb, but it's a really, really dumb statement. It's really, it's lost on how business actually works. Because the only way to get Jim Harbaugh to not coach in the NFL was to pay him NFL money. The only way to get John Gruden to come back from a lifetime appointment as Monday Night Football's color analyst was to pay him crazy money. John Madden did it for 30 years. And John Madden occasionally would be rumored to go after a job. And John Gruden was John Gruden was in the same thing. Remember, Cowboys might hire him. Hell, the Cowboys hired a bunch of his, uh, his assistant coaches thinking a couple of years ago before the Cowboys had that 13-win season. If things didn't work out, they were going to go hire Gruden. Tennessee tried. Other people have tried. The only way to get a guy who makes FU money is to up the FU money. To give, it's, the old, it's the godfather. Make him an offer he can't refuse. Sean Connery once played an imaginary dragon. Right? Sir Sean Connery. What? You want me to play what? For how much? I'll be there tomorrow. Right? That's the way it works. So you can be mad, but you don't allow, you're not allowing the context of the situation to determine what somebody's salary is. What do they make? How do we get them to turn down what they make, their happiness, uproot them, their whole family, and get them to our place? You know? You have made up your mind that John Gruden somehow is some is massively overpaid because you, you have no idea what other coaches make. You have no idea the structure of the deal. You don't understand that the salary cap does not apply to coaches. 
You don't realize that part of this is done because they're moving to Vegas and Vegas needs a name head coach to sell those private seat licenses on. And he had a lifetime appointment gig. So instead of overreacting to the possibility that a guy who nearly took the Raiders to the Super Bowl and made them relevant last time around and did win a Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was, was incredibly well regarded as a great football guy and yeah, you probably had to overpay to get him. That's what you got to do. Oh, the Angels shouldn't have paid Albert Pujols $300 million to come over from St. Louis. You, you had to. He off, got offered more money by the, by the Marlins. But they're the Marlins. This is the way business works. So instead of reacting to what, reacting to, what he's saying, thinking it, it, it doesn't bode well for Reggie McKenzie. It might not. Instead of reacting to it or overreacting because of how much money he makes. He's right. You can love Derwin James, but I didn't need another Derwin James. By the way, he just lost Donald Penn, his starting left tackle. Lo and behold, he drafted an offensive lineman in the first round. Maybe he knows a little bit something about what he's doing. 